Around six months ago, I ordered all of the soon-to-be-out-of-print box sets for the Warhammer Underworld teams. And it looks like today we are going to paint... The Spectral Guard. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the first video of the new year. Let's go ahead and unbox these minis. So I'm going to try and paint these as reasonably close to the original paint scheme as I can, as listed here on the pamphlet that comes with them. I might make a few variations here or there. Alright, looks like we're going to need a lot of reds and grays, so I'll gather those up in a minute. First impressions of the kit, I kind of like it. I like that the bases are already stylized. That's going to save a lot of extra work and drying time. So, I'm going to go ahead and clip these out, get them assembled, and I will be right back. Alright, after a quick coat with a gray sear for a primer, we're going to go ahead and use some Skeleton Horde and touch over all of the bone sections on all the models. While that's drying, I'm going to use some Blood Angels Red to paint all of the cloth and fabric sections. I'm going to do my best not to have any spillover onto any of the sections of the model that aren't cloth, because I really don't want to have to go back and do any touch-ups later, because that will definitely have an effect on the overall paint scheme as well as the time it takes to put the whole kit together. Now as I'm applying all the coating for the red here, I am kind of applying it in a medium thickness layer. Just enough to give a little bit of shadow definition, but not enough to be considered heavy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use some wash later to kind of highlight the shadowed areas and accentuate the uh, raised highlight areas. Now I'm only going to paint this one model on camera. I'll do all of the others off camera, but they're all going to have roughly the same color scheme. Next, we're going to use some Gore Grunt of Fur, and this is going to go on just two models that have these little kind of fur sections on the back of the cloak. Now, I apologize if my th voice sounds a little bit raspy here or there. I've been fighting a holiday cold that I came down with, but I will try and keep that to a minimum. Next, we're going to use some wild wood. This is going to be used to paint all of the shafts of the weapons, as well as any hand grips. And there's a few models with wooden shields or wood-backed shields. We're also going to use that on those areas. Now I'm going to use some Grey Knight Steel. Now, I haven't used this very often, and I gotta say, I like how it looks, you know, once the camera comes back into focus, uh, but it flows really, really well and has a very interesting kind of almost bluish metallic tint to it. Now we're going to use some Teleron Sand on the base. This will help create a kind of uh, underlayer for all of the dry brushing and extra layers that I'm going to add onto the base layer. Now I'm going to skip over any of these large stones or any skeletal bits that might be present on some of the bases. Now using some Basilicanum Gray, I'm going to touch up these little sections of chainmail that are on, I think, two models in the kit, and then we're going to use it to coat all of the Teleron sand as well. And any models that have a uh, kind of stone section, like this one is uh, standing on, it's going to coat that section as well.
Next, we're going to use some snake bite leather, and this is going to paint any belts, straps, or bandoliers that are on the models. Now using some black Templar, we're going to paint over the armored sections of the model, over all of the Grey Knight steel. This is going to create a kind of dark metallic effect that still has that kind of bluish metal shine coming through just a little bit. Now we're going to put a coat of Agrax Earthshade on the base of the model, as well as onto the skeleton and the leather. This will create a nice aging weathered effect for the belt, as well as a kind of putrid effect for the skeleton. Using the Teleran Sand, I'm going to do a medium dry brush onto the Gorglinta fur. Next, I'll use some Retributor Armor on all of the little embellishments that are on the model. So we've got a few buckles and the rims of all the shields and the cross guards of all the swords. Now these look very shiny when compared to the rest of the model, but we're going to add a kind of grunge effect in a couple of steps. So that will tone down the shininess and give a very nice aged and grimy look to them. Almost like the models climbed out of the ground with whatever weapons they happen to be buried with. Next I'll use some Artist Loft Grey to do a dry brush on all of the rocky sections of the base. Now using some Carabon Crimson, we're going to go over the cloak in kind of a medium layer. This will add a lot of definition to the shadows, and all of the raised areas will naturally have a highlighted effect when compared to the rest of the cloak. Next I'll use Rattling Grime to go over all of the weapons and shields that have been painted with the Grey Knight Steel as well as all of the little embellishments on the model. This will create a very nice grimed, aged, weathered look that I really did not expect to turn out as well as it did. And we'll finish everything up with a light to medium dry brush of neutral gray on the base. Alright everyone, so here we are with the finished squad. These were a very interesting sculpt to work with, and I love the little details that they have, and really enjoyed putting them together. So, please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see you all next episode.